Hi. Hi. I'm just going to switch the... Okay, there we go. So how are you doing? Good, how are you? Doing well on this rainy day. Yes. <laughs> cool rainy day. Yeah, very cool rainy day. So, welcome to the Living Stillness Testimonial. This is Janine. I, what is your last name again? Oh, yeah. Raycraft. Raycraft. Right, yes. right, right, right. So, and you're from... Um, we're from Paris, but we just moved to Cochrane in November. So nice. And how are you liking yeah. it? Oh, where he... Sorry. How are you liking it? Um, we're loving Cochrane. Uh, we're enjoying the quiet pace of life and everything. So, um, you know, it's very different, but we're, we're enjoying it for sure. Yeah. It's very slow paced. Everything's slow paced. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. Well, we'll open in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we, we have a testimony of grace, Lord, of your salvation and what you've done in our lives, Lord. I thank you for this testimonial, Lord, that, that will be shared today and the work that you've done in Janine's life, Lord. Mm -hmm. We just bless your name, Lord. May this testimony be a blessing to so many who mm -hmm. hear it, Lord. May it bring healing into lives, Lord. Mm -hmm. Because there's power in the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. That's right. So, Lord Jesus, we just give you all the glory and all the praise. Bless our listeners today, Lord. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. So... Where would you like me to start? <laughs> wherever, wherever you, you want. So when I was, um, I would have been 11, I believe. Um, we had just moved back to Southwestern Ontario mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I, my teacher, it initially started with my teacher calling my parents and saying, you know, Janine's falling asleep a lot in class and they really didn't, we weren't really sure what the reasoning was. So, you know, I went for testing and the whole thing. And, um, I think it was about two months into the school year mm -hmm. and up to that point, there hadn't been anything like there hadn't been anything that was noticeably different except for that I was tired a lot. Mm -hmm. And so um, as time went, went on, um, I, I couldn't eat a meal that didn't um, affect my intestinal tract. Um, I was, um, I couldn't, I just, I couldn't keep anything in, in, in me. Mm -hmm. um, so I wasn't getting any nutrition. Um, I went from being, you know, an average size, you know, 11 year old to wearing my sister's clothes, who was four years younger and very tiny. Um, wow. They could count my ribs. Um, that's how, how sick I became. Um, and I was losing up to three pounds a day. Um, the family doctor, which was my mom's boss, would invite me in weekly to get weighed. And I got to the point where she said to my parents, if she loses anything more, like if she loses any weight by tomorrow, then we need to admit her into the hospital. And it was, it was scary because we had no idea. I'd already been through lots of testing um, at the hospital in Brainford and doctors couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I'd been through so many, so many tests. Um, and this one doctor in Brantford, Dr. Summerton, um, is one of the doctors that saved my life. Um, it's, I, <clears throat> going back, I skipped ahead a bit, but um, I went into my mom's boss, um, my mom's boss's work and I, they weighed me and 
from one day to the next, I lost five pounds. And yeah, it was very, um, again, it was very um, intense because we had no idea. That's very unusual. You know, they, they initially thought that I was anorexic when I first went into the hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, they thought I was, you know, that it was some sort of an eating disorder. And then they thought maybe she's allergic to, uh, to gluten. So they thought I had celiac, which was very uncommon back then. Right. It was something you rarely ever heard of. And then the doctor, Dr. Summerton, who had initially seen me at the beginning of all of the mm. testing saw me again three or four months later and he walked past me in the hospital um, hallway and he saw my parents and he asked how I was doing. And they said, well, you walked right past her. And he said, well, no, I didn't. And they said, yeah, you did. Like he didn't recognize me at all. And at that moment he, I had gone in, I was in a, in having another procedure done Mm -hmm. and he walked in, there was, uh, four doctors or like five nurses, a technician. And he walked in and he said, I'm here. I'm, I'm here on the parents request. You need to stop all the tests right now. Like that's Mm -hmm. it. No more. Um, I had been in the hospital for over a week. They had had admitted me so that they could actually get my weight up. Um, and, um, at that moment, he, you know, my parents were out in the hallway and he said to them, I have a friend at McMaster yes. and I want to get, I, I'm going to get him, get Janine into an appointment. Um, so we went to this appointment again. I'd probably seen like 10, 15 different doctors over the course of this whole illness. That's a lot. It's a lot. Um, and they couldn't and find, they couldn't find anything. Like they did endoscopies, they did colonoscopies, they did, they did an, just a whole, a plethora of different tests. Right. right. Um, we had people that were going to call CAS on my parents because they didn't feel that they, they were doing anything. And the pastor said, you have no idea what this family is going through. Like they're, they're doing everything that they possibly can. Right. Right. Um, so it was really, it was really bad. Um, and then I remember sitting in, I, I'll never forget. I was sitting in the room in the three F clinic at McMaster, which is different. It's a different type of clinic now, but I remember sitting there. And my parents and I were just waiting for the doctor and the door opened Mm -hmm. and two people walked in. One was a doctor, one was a student, but they literally, they opened the door, they looked in and then they walked out. And so I remember us looking at each other and saying, well, they must've had the wrong room. Right. Two minutes later, it, it felt like, an hour later, but it was only a couple of minutes later. And this same two people walked in Dr. Eisenman and his, we were buffering for a bit there, but okay. okay. Um, Dr. Eisenman walked in, uh, he just a little Jewish doctor and Mm. his student, Chris, and he looked at me and he said, you have Crohn's disease. You need, and he just started like listing off all these things that were going, that was happening in the body. Um, they gave me prednisone because they had to get the inflammation under control. They told mm-hmm. me what foods I can't eat. They told me all these things and it was, it was crazy. Um, they put me on a trial medication and um, I honestly, I know it was, it was closer to the next school year that I received the diagnosis. And then um, Thanksgiving came and I had put weight on and Mm. I was, you know, I was getting healthy. Um, So that would have been grade six. Mm. Um, I believe it was grade seven (laughs) that 
we went, we were going to a Vangel in Brantford, Vangel Church, and we had a, um, a, a, a healing evangelist like um, come into our church. And I believe he was there for just maybe for a weekend. Um, it wasn't a very long period of time, right. but he would just sit there for a few minutes and listen to what the Lord's telling him. And I'll never forget. He said that he said, there's somebody here with um, a intestinal, like an intestinal t- disease um, that God wants to heal. And I will never forget, like there was no, it was just instant. Cause I knew I'd been raised in the church knowing that God can heal people from anything. Right. Right. And I remember like just beelining it to him in the front of the church. And he saw me, he's like, Oh, you were pretty fast getting down here. And I said, yep. And, uh, he said, what do you have? And I said, Crohn's disease. And he placed his hand on my stomach and I felt this heat, this just like, honestly, if you touched it, you could feel the heat. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I'd never felt anything like it before. And he prayed for me and I was instantly healed. Hallelujah. I don't recommend this, but I, like, I, I told my parents and they said, well, we, you know, we believe you, we know God can heal you, but I know that they'd been through so much with me being sick Mm -hmm. that they, they just, I, they wouldn't have been able to handle anything else. Like it would just was so overwhelming for such a long time for our whole family. And I remember them saying, we believe you, but you should still take your medication until we can get everything looked at. Well, then there was not a lot of testing for Crohn's. They didn't really know specifically what to look for. And now they do. But I remember my parents telling me that. And I remember I was like, I kept my own medication. I was very like, I was a stickler for taking it the whole thing, but I started not taking my medication. Right. And with the, with the trial I was on, there was a, like every three to six months, um, depending on how well things were going, I wouldn't go in for another appointment for at least three or six months. And so, um, I went in to see Dr. Eisenman and he said, have you been taking your medication? And I looked at my mom and I looked at the doctor and I said, God healed me three months ago and I stopped taking my medication. And I thought my mom <laughs> was going to get, like, she, was, she was not impressed with me at all um, mm. because we knew what was happening. But when she heard that it had been three months and I hadn't had any flare ups or anything, she just sat there and she's like, that's very like, I can't believe you lied to us that you were taking your medication. Cause I was like, I was getting rid of the pills. Like I was flushing them down the toilet. Right. Um, <laughs> just so that it looked like I was taking them. And mm-hmm. the doctor said to me, he said, as your doctor, I have to tell you that you need to take your medication. But as a person, I believe you. <laughs> and mm-hmm. that was the last time I stepped foot in his office. Praise God. And it still <laughs> is very emotional um, mm-hmm. thinking about what we went through, yeah. the healing that I experienced. Um, but it's absolutely amazing. Mm. so um yeah that's uh and then it's funny because i would like i think maybe 
seven years or eight years later, around there, the same evangelist came to Brantford. I used to live in Brantford. Oh, did you? Oh, I you lived go. out on Linden Road. Oh, you did? Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah we lived, we were uh, living off Grace. of Dunstan. Okay, we went to Grace Family Center there. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah a while back. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it is a while back, yeah. Um, but yeah, he came back, he was actually, there was a, there was a church on Park Road that was what they, like, people refer to as the the italian church in town oh <laughs> yeah. um but it's a pentecostal church and uh they had rented a school gym so it could hold a larger group of people mm -hmm. and i at that point um was healed from asthma and so from the same gentleman and it, it was funny because i said to him you prayed for me, you know, so many years ago. And did he remember? Uh, he, when I told him, he remember, like I told him the story and he remembered, yeah. he remembered. And he said, that was an amazing moment. And he said, how are you doing? And I said, I'm still healed. I'm, you know, and I said, it's been, it's been amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, quite, quite a story. You know how did how did you come to the lord have you always been in a christian family um always been in a christian family my dad mm -hmm. was a pastor growing up um mm -hmm. so i was raised in you know in, with the gospel um you know hearing about the power of prayer and the power that we have in christ um you know and even more so as we got older there were other things that we learned about as well so um, yeah, so all my life I grew up in the in the church. Praise God. And you yeah. never walked away from the Lord. You just stayed with the Lord the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. The that, whole time. That's amazing. You don't you don't hear that very often. No, and especially, you know, when you Praise God. If people grow up in the church, right? You don't always yes. hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So what brought you to Cochrane? Um, we really didn't feel, um, that Paris was where we were supposed to be anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, we had, um, started talking about relocating just because of, um, Paris growing so much so quickly. There, right. there was over 2,000 homes built within, you know, a very short amount of time. Is um, Paris is, is Brayside Camp is in Paris, right? Paris, yeah. Brayside yeah. in, yeah, yeah. in Paris. So, um, yeah, so we talked about relocating, but at, at one point we said, you know, we'll wait until our daughter's out of high school, mm -hmm. which at that point there were there were five and a half years until she would be done high school, like done school and out of high school. And so we thought we would plan ahead mm -hmm. and we started looking at smaller communities. We actually, we were going to stay within a four, within a five hour um, area. We didn't mm -hmm. really want to go South. We wanted to go North. And so um, we started looking at, Thunder Bay, or sorry, not Thunder Bay, North Bay in Sturgeon right. Falls. Cause my dad had pastored in Sturgeon Falls before we have, we know people in the Sturgeon Falls, North Bay area. Um, at least I do, but we started looking and then James, my husband started looking further North and that's when we found uh -huh. property in Cochrane and we decided at that point we said, okay, let's look at the property. We came up a year ago, January, and we said, okay, well, let's buy this. We'll sit on it. And then we'll sell down South and build on the property. Mm -hmm. um, but we figured it would happen in five to 10 years that we would end up building on the property. And, 
you know, with COVID and everything that happened surrounding COVID, life became a little bit of a challenge because, you know, neighbor, they were like, it was neighbor against neighbor sometimes where, you know, you could have people visiting you outside of, you know, outside in your yard and you'd be a distance apart, but people would still call the police on you. Right. Right. And it was just, it was getting difficult. It was getting difficult to be able to function as a family and, you know, the whole thing and um, lots of different rules. And when we came up here, we had noticed that there were still rules, but things were a little bit lax compared to down south. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I, I said to my husband, let's keep an eye on the real estate down, you know, up in Cochrane. And mm -hmm. in August, I saw the house that we've, we, we ended up purchasing and, you know, we said, okay, so let's wait to see if it's there the end of August when we're going to be going up for a holiday. Let's see if it's there. And if it is, we'll, we'll take a look at it. And I had said to James, like Sarah was <laughs> really on board um, because we we would be leaving all of our family and friends down south. Mm -hmm. um, and we knew that that had to change. And I also needed the security of knowing James had work before we went up and everything. Sure. So when we came up, we were about to leave and we went on realtor.ca and we saw the house was still listed. So we thought, okay, well, James called the realtor to see if we could get an appointment. And so we did. And then um, he had, um, I redid his resume and he went online and started applying for different positions in town. He's a trucker. So he applied for a few jobs and we heard back from one which was amusing because the North, so we call it the North property because it's North of town, mm -hmm. but the North property where it is, there's no signal. Like you might get a blip where you right. will receive a text message, but if you want to reply to that text message, good luck. <laughs> you got to go out to the highway. <laughs> you do. You literally, yeah. or you literally have to drive halfway to town which is 20 minute or so it would be it's a 20 minute drive to town so you have to drive for 10 minutes before you get a decent signal right you send a text message or make a phone call and and be able to maintain that signal so we got a phone call james got a phone call on his cell phone while we were in the trailer and we thought well that's weird so we <laughs> that's the lord <laughs> right exactly yeah. So we, um, we were playing um, cards and then James drove down the road to get a signal and he was gone for an hour and we were kind of surprised. We thought, what's going on? We, our fo we foster parented and our foster son was, um, was on relief. Um, so he wasn't with us. So, but they had our number in case of an emergency. So we were hoping that he was okay, but it was just bizarre. And so then he came back and he said, that was the job. That was about the job I applied for. Mm. And earlier in the day I had said to him, you know, maybe just send an email and say, you know, we're in town until Thursday. So give me a call and we can set up, we can set up an appointment. Mm. Well, here it's, his work and they called him for an interview and he went in for the interview. He was in there for an hour and then he came out. So we're all buckling our seatbelts up and the whole thing. And he said, they want to meet you. And I said, okay, <laughs> that's well, weird. It's his interview. Weird. Why would they want to meet you? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so then we were just, I said to him, okay, this is a little odd. Um, so then we went inside. We were there for another hour. Um, and he walked out and he had a job. And it blew my mind. <laughs> just blew my mind. So why did they want to meet you? So just to, you know, they said they're they're a family, you know, family um, 
business. Yeah. Business. Yeah. And you know, family is important and the whole end. No. Yeah. Which is fine. And that's great. Um, he's no longer with that business. Right. Um, but he is with another business, um, locally, but it's one that goes all over the, all over. But that the, was kind of like the door opener. F- it the was confirmation, confirmation for you. It was because, yeah. you know, even the day before that, looking at the house, we walked the property, um, and Sarah loved it and she got mm-hmm. really excited and, she was on board. And so James and I, we just said, okay, well, there we go. You know, we decided to leave town early so we could go down South and talk to our realtor down there. We put in an offer on the house up here and it was accepted before the end of the weekend. So James had Mm -hmm. one week off of work. And in that time we contacted our realtor to list we started prepping the house, like just decluttering things and everything. Yeah. Um, he had a job and the offer was accepted on the house up here. So we actually, we got home um, and we went out to Brayside um, because my parents are there from April to, or sorry, May 1st till November 1st. Yeah. And we went out to Brayside and we told my parents, we were just like, we were up there and this is what happened when we were on vacation and they couldn't believe it. My dad said, this was all God. Of course. And we said, of course, because there was yeah, no yeah. way, like everything just fell into line. Sarah loved the house. She's enjoyed living up here. She misses family, of course, but you know, with technology nowadays, you know, you can talk to them, you can see them face to face. And so, yeah, you know, it was the same thing with us. Really? Everything from start to finish fell in place. Everything. God moved the mountains, even up to the very last, when we had to bring our rental truck back, we thought we would bring it back to North Bay or, Timmins or, or wherever the nearest one was. And nope, we found out that there was one right outside of Cochrane, the U-Haul place. Oh, wow. And it everything, even to the last, everyone showed up, you know, to help unload like 10 or so people. Wow. Just we thought we would have to do it ourselves and whatever, right? <laughs> but yeah. I've organized everything and, and wow. just... When the Lord's timing is right, everything falls in place. Oh, definitely. No striving, there's no struggling. And yeah. God. Yeah. It's amazing because, you know, one of the other things that we really, that we really wanted was I said to James, we need to have a church community. We need mm. to have our extended family. And, mm. you know, when we first came up, we, you know, we decided in August, um, we met one pastor and I'm like, yeah, I'm not like, that's not the church we're supposed to go to. I just didn't like, sometimes you have this, you know, this feeling and, and I said, James, I don't think that's where we're supposed to go. So, um, I had actually, um, called pastor Bob in August Mm -hmm. when we were here. And I said to him, I introduced myself and uh, he said, where are you from? And I said, well, we're from, we currently live in Paris, Ontario. And he goes, oh, right near Brayside. I said, yeah. Yeah. And uh, he said, oh yeah, I've been to Brayside. And I said, really? He said, yeah, but now we're, you know, we were at Silver Birches a lot. And um, I didn't know he was camp manager at that point. And so um, so I said to him, oh, my family used to attend. And I said, you know, my, my great, uncle, and he said, well, who's your family? I said, Dan Bjorkman. And he said, I know Dan Bjorkman. Yes. Yes. We and know him, so, him too. <laughs> yeah. And so I said to him, really? And he said, yeah. I said, well, I said, my uncle, you know, was there a lot. And I said, they had a cottage at Brayside as well, but I said, I remember silver birches because my cousins used to talk to me about it. 
but I had never been myself. Yeah. I've never been to Silver Birches. So even to drive there, like just to, I've never been there physically ever. And so he said, well, if he's your uncle, who's your dad? And I said, Mark Gellner. And he said, I know Mark Gellner. And I said, You've <laughs> got to be kidding me. So there you go. A small world, like the Pentecostal world is very small, right? Um, but so, I, think a lot, I think a lot of it too, though, is that God connects you with yeah. the right people, right? And exactly. It was all a God connection. <laughs> it, it was. And honestly, you know, at that point in that conversation, we found out about the youth group. We found mm -hmm. out about there being a men's men, different men's groups and, you know, the ladies connection that gets together. And, you know, when I got off yeah. the phone and James got in the vehicle, I said to him, okay, this is what I've just found <laughs> out. And he said, are you kidding? And I said, no, I'm not kidding you. So, you know, when we finally, like we finally moved up here, um, we were welcomed with open arms. It was amazing. We, you know, a pastor Bob came over and um, him and Judy had made a meal. Um, and so we had that, which was nice because unpacking is grueling. Of course. Um, it's just, oh yeah. Um, we were fortunate because we had a moving company move us up here. Mm. Um, but um they brought us a meal and, and then, um, Pam and Pam brought us a meal. Um, and then we suffered a great loss after Christmas last year. Mm. And, uh, the church just gathered around us. Mm. So it was pretty amazing. Oh, and then Krista, Krista brought us a meal and Krista. It's funny. She's, Facebook friends with somebody I know, but she's, she also knows somebody else I know. And when I posted, we were moving to Cochrane, both my friends um, said, Oh, we need to, we need to connect you with a friend, like with, you know, somebody we know who moved up to Cochrane two years ago. Well, here we know people from like from our circle of friends Mm -hmm. We each know each other, like we each know other, other people's friends, but we never knew each other ourselves. Like we'd never met. And oh, so we awesome. met on Facebook. Uh, we got connected that way. And Krista brought a, um, a delicious venison, venison stew to our house when we first moved in. Um, and then, you know, after Christmas, um, she came and, you know, got our mail for us, but um, just another connection, right. That we had. Yeah. No idea yes. And then Monia and, um, her husband, Benoit. 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 Monia. they know my cousin from Windsor. So wow. they were staying <laughs> in Windsor and my cousin, Kevin said, Hey, I'm having dinner with my friends, um, from Cochrane. And so he connected us that way. And, um, yeah, so it's just been, you know, we felt at home when we first went right, to right. the church that, that, um, that connection that we have, um, through Christ, it's just when we walked in the door and it was just, we had this feeling of home. So what? What do you feel the purpose is for God bringing you here? Like, like you're calling and. We've always felt the need to help people. We don't know how um, we still feel we're supposed to um, foster parent, but we've needed because of the loss we've experienced, we need to take time so that we can just make sure that we're, we're healed up from mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And we know that's going to take, it's going to take time, but um, we, we do feel led to continue. Right. We don't know in what, in what um, area yet, whether it's full-time or part-time. Um, but we also 
feel that we're supposed to help people and we just, we don't really have a vision of, or a complete vision of what that's going to look like right now. Right. right. We're still praying about it. Um, You know, we're, I guess, just waiting on some, a little bit more direction. Right. Right. So, um, because it could be, it could be in just in multiple small, small ways that we help people. Right. And there's um, certainly a need for that today. Yeah. Great need. There's so many needs out there. Yeah. Hurting people, you know, people who need ministry, oh, especially definitely. in families, especially in families, you know, with the youth yeah. and the children. And, yeah. Yeah. Our world's very different now. Um, mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things that, you know, people could be dealing with that we've, you know, experienced as well, you know, Mm -hmm. um, there was a loss in our church earlier this year of a young woman that I never personally met, but, you know, I reached out to her mom because, you know, I'm just like, we've, we've lost, we lost a child, like our, um, a child or, you know, the end of the, of last year. And it was just, heartbreaking um but some of the things that we're going through we could help mm-hmm. uh, help others with right yes yes um so and praise god so and you know in our church really surrounded that family which was amazing yes um, yeah in so many different ways so um you know i pray that 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 mother you know, that that's just a seed, right. For her, yes. Yes. um, for her to, you know, to be able to walk into the church and, you know, she knows that she'll be accepted and everything. So I'm, I'm praying, you know, praying for her and praying that that yeah. yes. opens the door. Right. So. Hmm. Well, what if, if you could talk to our audience, what would you um, encourage them in, in these times that we're living in, especially, you know, there's a lot going on and a lot of distractions, you know, how to stay strong in our love for the Lord and our walk with God. My, my, the thing that I would say to them the most is don't forget your birthright in Christ Mm -hmm. because with everything that happens in our world, we tend to forget the power, the authority that we have, right? He's given us the authority to raise the dead. He's given us the authority to pray for the sick. He's given us all of the, all of that authority. And I feel that, over the years, it's been, f- people have forgotten. Mm-hmm. They read it, but they, it's, they, it's like, they need that revelation knowledge all over again, where they finally, they, they're finally able to grasp the, what God has said to us as his children. So what I would say to them is don't forget their birthright because that is our birthright. That's our right in Christ. Yeah. We've, we've given, given us, that. Yes. Yeah. we have like we are righteous in his sight and so remembering that authority remembering that we have the authority to you know pray for the rain to stop even like things like that where yes. or pray for the rain to start because up here we know what that's like like what that can happen but yes. um we need also- to do our God-given dominion and authority that was given to us at the, the exchange at the cross. Exactly. What happened at the cross of Calvary when Jesus said it was finished and the devil was put under his feet and he took the keys to hell and death. Right. Oh, and, and he gave that to us. Yes. You know, we're no longer under the curse. We're, we're walking in the blessings exactly. of the cross and everything that he accomplished there. And that dominion and that power and that authority, like you said. Exactly. No. And I, I, 
you know, getting into our, into the word, you Mm -hmm. know, and praying that God reveals the word to us is, is very important because you can read, you could read the Bible 10 times, but it doesn't Mm -hmm. mean that you understand you fully understand what's being, what you're reading. Right. And so right. having, having revelation knowledge of the authority we have mm-hmm. and, and just even, just even the revelation knowledge of knowing that when Jesus said it is finished, he meant it is finished. We don't have to constantly, um, hover over the idea of having to, you know, get saved every single Sunday, you know, because growing up in growing up, that's basically what it was like, where you felt like you had backslidden over the week. So you had to become a Christian again. And it, the knowledge of knowing, you know, when, when Christ died on the cross and said, it is finished, that's it you it's done he is the ultimate sacrifice and it's something that you don't have to constantly you know go to him and and be saved again because yes it's like you're saying what he did the first time wasn't enough so you're having to do it all over again Mm -hmm. and so we're new creatures in christ the old has passed away we've become all things have become new. Exactly. Right? And, we don't. Yeah. And some people struggle, you know, like some people, they struggle with the flesh and that mm-hmm. is a natural thing, but it's moving on from that and maturing and everything like going past that. Right. right. Um, to the point where, you know, certain areas in your life may not be a struggle anymore. And some of us have those struggles, yeah. but when you are praying for God to renew your mind, those things become the past, right? Yes. And yes. So, you know, getting into the word is very, is very, very important. Um, yeah. You know, and, and s- starting young with your children, like start young with your children because, you know, I remember when Sarah was very, you know, even when I was pregnant with her, um, you know, we would pray over her Mm -hmm. and when she was born and when she started to talk, you know, we would talk, she would, she knew, you know, Jesus heals. Like we've (laughs) always, we've always put that, you know, given her that message. Right. And, um, and it's a message she still hears today. You know, she still hears that message. She knows that she just needs to pray and it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so it's something that starting young is, is, is very important. So, um, realize your authority in Christ and that it was finished at the cross. You don't have to keep coming back for salvation because it's done. Stay in the word, study the word and allow the Holy spirit to reveal it to you. Yeah. uh, Jesus through the scriptures and then train up your children in the ways of the Lord. Yes. Train, be examples to our children. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Wow. That is so true. Yeah. And I thank God that my parents were examples for me. They weren't perfect parents, but we're not going to be perfect. Right. No. But as long as that we can show our children forgiveness, you know, repentance that we are human, but we come and we say, forgive me. We example Christ like, Exactly. The nature and the character of Christ in our walk. We're yeah. going to fail, but that's so important. It is very important. Yeah. Well, thank you, Janine. And I'll see you on Sunday, most likely. Oh. Well, oh. we'll be, we're going down south. <laughs> oh, actually, we are too. Actually, the, yeah, we're, we're going to be down south too. For yeah. Our 
<laughs> yeah, we're going to Hamilton. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to yeah, be going at Brayside. To... Okay, Brayside, Paris. Yeah. Yep. yep. So. All right. So well, yeah, we'll see when our holidays are over. But thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. It was it was a great great yes. interview. A great testimony. Thank you. And I'm sure our audience will be really blessed. Yeah. Would you close us in prayer? Sure. Okay. Father, we just thank you for, for who you are and for everything that you do in our lives. Father, we thank you for walking with us through our day to day. And we thank yes. you for this ministry of Anne and her husband. And we pray that you would just bless them and bless those who watch their podcast Father, we pray that you would just give us all a, a wonderful um, day and that you um, remind us of who we are in you. Yes, Amen. Lord. Amen. And Lord, just bless Janine's home, bless her husband, bless her family, Lord. Amen. We cover them in the blood of Christ, Lord. May all your plans for their lives come to fruition, Lord. Mm-hmm. Fill them with your spirit, Lord, and your grace, And your peace and your joy be in their home, in their lives. And use them mightily for your kingdom, Lord. May they do great exploits in your name for your glory and honor, Lord. Bless their daughter. Lord God, may she be a strong uh, woman of God, a strong example to other youth her age, Lord. Wherever she goes, Lord, may she let the love of Christ and the you just shine through her, Lord Jesus. Strengthen her, Lord, to walk in purity and to walk in your ways down the path of righteousness, Lord, all the days of her life, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you very much again. Thank you. All right. And we'll talk to you soon. Yes, definitely. Have a good day. You too, Janine. Thank you. Bye. Bye.